This is a simulation of different kind of waves in an elastic solid. We have the scalar harmonic waves, vector harmonic waves, spin one half, and charge. Let me start with the scalar harmonic waves first. We can rotate this around with the mouse and you can see the different harmonics by changing the quantum numbers, the principal, the L and the M. So for instance, here we can choose zero or we can choose um, magnetic number one and so on. Um, the different controls here are the number of markers. So there are some markers. You can see red um, little cubes. Um, by the way, we can also zoom in, of course. You can see what they're doing. And um, in the case of the scalar harmonics, what each point does in the elastic solid, you can see it here, it's a small displacement in a longitudinal fashion. And you can, of course, also an enhance the displacement factor here. We can also um, ch change the time scale to make it slower or faster. Uh, sorry, the trail length here. You can change the trail length to make it the red line longer. We can make it faster or slower to see better. Um, we can also slice it because sometimes it's a little bit hard to see it in 3D. So what we can do, we can have a slice axis. Let's say this one. And then you're going to have to rotate this around so you can see that particular slice. Um, the marker shall still be there, but um, the rest of the wave, it just shows that one slice. And we can also change the width of the slice if you want to see a bigger part of it. Um, we can also change the location of the slice so we can go through this whole 3D scene um, slice by slice to see what's happening here. We can change the point size to very small to much larger. So um, yeah, so these are the scalar harmonics. Now we can go to the vector harmonics. Now, of course, this gets a little bit confusing if you watch, if you see the whole 3D, <laughs> if you don't slice it. Um, first of all, let's maybe make the points a little bit smaller so they're a little bit easier to see. We can also reduce the displacement amount to make it easier to see. Um, and again, of course, here what we can do, we have the different quantum numbers we can choose. Um, so let me just put, maybe change it to two and zero. Um, now it gets easier to see if we, um, again, introduce slicing because otherwise it's a bit hard to see. So let me just do some slicing X. Uh, so zoom in a little bit. Now we can make the slice a bit thinner. And now it's getting a little bit easier to see. Um, we can now also track the movements of each element. Let me just increase the displacement a little bit so we can actually see the movement, you know, if we can enhance the displacement. Now we can see what these, um, the red points are just random elements inside this elastic solid, what this is doing. And when we make it faster, it will become easier to see what's happening to these points. Maybe make the slice a bit thinner. Like this. At least let's change to different quantum numbers. Um, you can now go through all the different quantum numbers to see what's happening. Again, this is all, um, these are all waves in an elastic solid. The next type of wave is a spin one half wave, which I have, um, there's a separate video just on that. And again, we have these 
Uh, I turn on slicing right away because if you don't do slicing, it, it's a hard to see what's happening inside. So it's a lot easier with, with, with slicing. Slicing the x-axis, slicing the y-axis. This is a typical view. But again, you know, this is three-dimensional, okay? This is not, not flat. So you can see that also when we change the width of the slice, you can see it's this is three-dimensional. We can also, again, change the slice position, moving up and down. And again, the red dots are just highlighted points randomly inside the elastic solid. And you can see what each, what the displacement looks like of one particular um, point in the elastic solid. And in case you haven't seen the spin one half waves before, let me just increase the number of markers and we can make them a little bit faster because then you can see that the points on top, they all go around um, one direction and the dots at the bottom, they go in the other direction. That's the typical, that's the property of the spin one half wave. Also, I'm not going to go into detail right now, but um, when you watch the central point, let's just go back to zero uh, and then change the width to the minimum. If you were to watch a central point, like if you place the sphere here, it would have to uh, rotate twice to get back to its original configuration. But that's a whole, there's a whole other video on that part. So the seven, 20 degree period is a feature, a property of spin one half. Then I have been also trying to model charge. Oh, this is a bit too fast. Let me just slow it down. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Uh, time scale. Okay, okay, much slower. Um, for charge, and again, I, I just uh, op did a slice because otherwise it's kind of hard to see. These are longitudinal waves, and you can see when you have plus charge, it looks like the wave front is going outside, even though, you know, each um, element in the grid, so each marker is just going back and forth. But when we flip it, if look, if it goes uh, plus charge, it go outside. And if you change it to minus charge, it will look like it's going inside. It's just a different uh, face. It's just behaving differently. That's all. But the movement, you can see each individual grid point is just oscillating back and forth. And again, you can see this is three-dimensional and it's radially um, symmetrical. So if we, you can see that when we change the, the width, you can see that it's spherical. You can see it's spherical. It's radially symmetrical. Doesn't matter how we slice it. It looks the same. In all directions, it's completely symmetrical.